Welcome to this week's film review on the Daniela Squared Talk. I'm Daniela Rasika. And I'm Daniela DiGiovanni. We're your hosts for today's episode. Today we're interested in the how, who, what, why, where, and when about cinematic experiences. So today's film of choice is La Finestra di Fronte, or Facing Windows, and it's directed by Ferzan Ozbatek, uh, and it, was, it came out in 2003. He's an Italian-Turkish uh, film director, and this film had lots of success at the time it was released. That led to Sony North America distributing it, and it gained awards such as five David Di Donatello, four Chuck Di Oro, and three Global Di Oro Awards. This film combines elements of drama, romance, and it portrays the life of an unsatisfied housewife who crosses paths with a dementia-ridden Holocaust survivor and parallels his past to her present, concluding that people do not reveal themselves just by looking at them from the outside and the importance of pursuing your happiness while you still can. While the storyline tends to focus more on Giovanna and her struggles, there is a reason that the past of Simone is shown so frequently throughout the film. Why are the past and present so important, and how are they defined from each other in the film? Well, I think um, first we need to look at what is Simone's past. So he was actually, we find out later in the film, that he was actually um, homosexual at a time where it was not fully accepted, and he was struggling to exist in the time of, you know, ex essentially intensive oppression of people, and young Simone never um, is in contact with this other uh lover that he has. We always see him steps behind him in this film. Um, and we see him looking, like longing looks, um, maybe they make eye contact across the room while they're dancing. This happens in a, in a flashback scene and he follows him from behind, you know, again as well. And this kind of expresses the similarities between Simone and Giovanna and how he, I believe, like how he essentially already lived through the struggles with which she is currently dealing with. And this kind of, you know, it encourages the life lesson that you need to kind of act on your desires and so that you can prevent life from you know taking its course before you had this chance. Yeah that's a great point to go off of and the ability to experience the past and present in the film it does reinforce the theme of life choices and ultimately pulls the two characters Giovanna and Simone together on a parallel track. The two characters they are put in life-changing situations throughout their lives. In the opening scene of this movie the camera winds seamlessly from capturing young Simone's life to showing him in real time, which takes us to Giovanna's current life with all her struggles. The scene evolves within time as it shows young Simone running down the end of the street and evolves to find Giovanna standing on the same street with her husband. And this element of the intersecting of both characters holds an importance as it will open up and develop in the rest of the film. Yeah, and I think now, um, the next part, to answer the next part of your question, how are they defined? So we see often um, how this camera is making very you know, swift movements throughout the film. It seems very much like a continual shot um, from the past and the present, which again, um, like almost they aren't really different times. And it's an alternative to what could be happening currently in the scene. Um, so even we see Simone having like flashbacks to people or past moments in the present of his, as if he's reliving these memories um, while, you know, we contrast it to Giovanna's present storyline being told. Um, so with that being said, it, there's definitely a stress on the importance of, of timing in this film um, and how it plays a role in the storyline. I think, you know, it's important because uh, Simone, um, he's existing during the Holocaust and he's missing the chance to fulfill his desires and, and it puts a hold on his life um, with this invasion of Germany. But he then launches Giovanna's almost rediscovery of herself when she meets him um, by chance just on the street and then... Um, she's able to kind of meet the neighbor with who, like that she's been having fantasies about. His name is Lorenzo, and um, she does this when Simone actually gets lost and he finds him. So yeah, getting a little bit deeper on that point, it's when Giovanna goes to drop off her baked goods at the local bar that she usually drops off at. Simone is with her, and he realizes the street that Giovanna is driving down, and it brings him back, back to his past as the street holds symbolic meaning to him. This causes him to get out of the car and causes a scene as to where he's lost. Um, Giovanna gets help from the people in the bar and it just so happens that through this event, she's able to meet her neighbor, Lorenzo. The guy that she happens uh, to fantasize about through her apartment window. And when thinking about the leading up to ev these events, we can hold Simone accountable for putting Giovanna in, in the right time at the right place. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, exactly like you said. Like we had said before, he kind of sparks this rediscovery of Giovanna, and then he, as they gain a deeper view of each other throughout this film, um, he kind of is able to witness, um, you know, her finding the passion in life again, and he marks the beginning of this this rediscovery that you had mentioned, um, and she just had to find herself in someone else. Um, she get, regains, like we said, this passion for baking, for love, and longs for bettering herself, and we see her as we had seen her working in a chicken factory, and she wasn't very happy with her life. So it's really a, a time of re-evaluation re um, at this current time and place. Um, I think the meeting of these characters is very strategic in terms of the film, right place, right time. Um, you know, we see Giovanna meeting Simone for the first time, struggling to keep her home life together um, with her kids and her husband, and then she's able to put a face on the outside. But Simone stumbles into her life at the right time and kind of cracks this open. Yeah, exactly. I think when Giovanna and Simone first meet, the scene opens up and it finds Giovanna and her husband standing in the middle of the street where they are um, in an argument and they're both interrupted by Simone, who seems very lost and confused. So his interruption, um, it interrupts the natural flow of Giovanna's life. And we see throughout the film, in my opinion, it betters her. And um, he interrupts her, her habits because all the couple seems to do is fight and be unhappy. This is exactly one of Simone's purposes in the film. He is placed strategically to delay and interrupt the timing of Giovanna's life path, which teaches her to be truly happy. And as the film progresses, we are faced with other characters, um, you know, the character Simone having his complexities and passions that aren't easily understood on the surface. But Simone acts as a parallel for Giovanna. Um, as he too has a passion for baking and, and desires that he hides behind his closed doors. So this brings up the idea of surface versus reality. You know, we, we kind of wonder who has a limited view or who can see past the services of individuals. I think that's a good point. Um, I noticed that in this film, we're often looking behind these characters, like as Giovanna looks out her her window towards her neighbor's seemingly intriguing life, or you know, the camera follows her um, her friend. Actually, there's an example here that's really pretty good when um, one of her friends um, hears an argument upstairs and goes up to look. She follows up, the camera follows behind her, and she confronts the neighbors fighting inside their home. And it's kind of in both cases we see these characters kind of making up assumptions about what is going on, you know, whether it's the two inside the home arguing or, you know, Giovanna's uh, neighbor that she's looking at making assumptions about what their life is like. Um, their, their point of view is not necessarily true. There's always more um, than what we can see with this limited view that you had mentioned that the window may permit. So this must mean something for point of view. Um, why is point of view in the film and, and how is it expressed? We can only see what we are presented. Whatever a person chooses to reveal, a deeper relationship can be achieved. Yeah, I, uh, I totally agree with that. And I think three characters that are exposed in vulnerable uh, moments um, are Giovanna, Simone, and Lorenzo. And this ultimately leads to their opening up of character. Um, so we get a deeper than surface meaning to each of these. Giovanna herself is just floating through her unhappy life until she is faced with the opportunity and insight to better herself internally and situations externally. So the factors around her through her life choices are definitely affected through this. Yeah, and I think um, there's even this kind of example between Giovanna and Simone. There's a, where a deeper understanding is recognized between the two. Um, Simone isn't all what he appears to be from the audience's perspective. Um, you know, we see him as an old, confused uh, man, and Giovanna kind of sees him for this surface character as well, and, but that's when she isn't so thrilled for having him around her children. Um, so she's also got, like, this similar limited point of view. Getting deeper into a three-dimensional view of this character of Simone, um, we see it was just kind of a, a constructed identity because that's not his real name. His real name is Davide. We learn that um, his lover's name was Simone actually, and we learn that Davide was a Holocaust survivor and he himself struggled with with love. Um, so this kind of again, once again, intervenes Joanna's story. So moving on to our third character, Lorenzo. Lorenzo is Giovanna's neighbor and. Giovanna glorifies Lorenzo up to be this successful, stylish, good-looking guy um, who's just a window away for her. Um, so Lorenzo is very surface to Giovanna until um, we are faced with his reality. It's when Giovanna gets to know him and is able to break through his surface character to reveal that he was always fantasized with her and she never expected that, giving her an alternate point of view. 
So when talking about POV, we can draw relations with the film's title itself. So I guess we could ask the question to, as, as to why the film is called Facing Windows. Um, I think that we can say that the film is called Facing Windows because through a window it is possible to see some things, but not all things necessarily. You can kind of catch a, a glimpse of life from either side of this window. It could be, um, I guess you could say the equivalent of a window to the soul. It is also through other people or letting other people see into your soul. You might be able to discover more about yourself or, you know, maybe what is best for you. So one example we see in the film is how Giovanna rediscovers her passion um, for baking. And it's only when Simone comes into her life. He sees her doing a good job while she's baking her pastries to take to the bar. And he asks her why she never really pursued it further and why he, she never used this as an anchor point to better herself or better her life as it's something she enjoys doing. And she, she ultimately results to talking about the topic of money and saying how she never saw it making um, a life for her, but I think Simone kind of pushes her to that um, extent and and really opens her up to that possibility. Yes, and so I guess, like we could say, as I mentioned before, you know, it's almost like the equivalent of the window to the soul. So, so what is the role of the window? Um, I think the the window is really important in this in this storytelling because it's not only it's not only present. Um, you know, f and significant physically in this film, but it also works as a deeper metaphor for people themselves. Yeah, so uh, I guess we could think of it as um, the physical window is, um, mm -hmm. is the view that we get of Lorenzo through Giovanna's limited window view. Through apartment vi uh, window, we see a side to Lorenzo's lifestyle that is open for interpretation as we are, are faced with the surface um, aspects of his character. This window is prevalent throughout the film as it's Giovanna's fascination to, and she desires a deeper insight into Lorenzo's life. So interestingly enough, once we're given that opportunity to stand in Lorenzo's shoes and see through his apartment window's outlook, all Giovanna sees is where she belongs back in her life. Yeah, and within that same perspective, um, through Lorenzo's apartment window, she sees her kids and her, husband's but, and her husband but longs for more. Um, so kind of sets out to make her life more afterwards because because of that. So it's kind of acting as a, as a turning point in the film, even though it, it kind of does happen a little bit later, it acts as this turning point. Giovanna sees herself through a different perspective, um, Lorenzo's window, and it motivates her to change what she doesn't like um, as she looks at this limited, uh, you know, window surface of her life. So now moving on to the, the metaphorical window, um, this stems from the idea that people are windows themselves and we can only see as much as they present to us. They act as windows into the lives so they expose passions, feelings, and a deeper reality on events. Simona acts as a window for Giovanna as she can see the bettering of herself through him. So searching for a deeper self-meaning um, that she achieves through understanding her passion and understanding that every couple goes through hard times. Um, to conclude, Facing Windows has a deeper symbolism weaved through its film in ways of looking at the past and present, the two parallels between characters, and thinking about the cinematic elements of timing and point of view. Yes, and um, the director, Oz Patek, really focuses on the lives of these two seemingly different people and does so in an effort to support essentially this argument that life should really be lived to its fullest. Well, that's all for today's film talk. We hope you enjoyed it and turn, tune in next time. Thank you.